guys, this is Deepika from mytutorialrack.com. In this tutorial, we are going to discuss another interview question. The question is, what is batch apex and what are the different methods of the batch apex class? So first we are going to talk about what is this batch apex? Now batch apex is used to run large jobs. When you are processing millions of records or thousands of records, let's say you're doing a data cleaning operation or archiving your records and you have, let's say millions of records. If you're trying to process those records in one transaction, you will definitely going to hit your governor limits and you will never be able to process millions of records in one go. So in that case, what you do is you divide your records in the form of batches and then you performed your logic for each of the batch. So that is what the batch apex is. So using the batch apex, you can process the records asynchronously in the batches. That's why we call it as batch apex. And each of the batch will be under the governor limit. So you will avoid hitting your governor limits and you will be able to process those million records uh, which we could not have processed otherwise if you're not using batch apex. So let's say you have 1 million records that you want to process. So what you do is you divide those million records in let's say batches, okay? Batch one, batch two, batch three, batch four. So, and then you, you, what you do is each of the batch is going to be under the governor limits, or we can say the platform limits. And then you're going to process those records, but now you're doing it in the form of the batches and each batch will have some records. will have new set of records and each batch will have their own governor limits. So they will never hit those governor limits. Now, what are the advantages of this batch apex? So the first advantage is that let's say you are not going to hit the governor limits. That is the advantage because every transaction starts with a new set of governor limits, making it easier to ensure that your code will stay in the governor execution limits. The second advantage that you have is, let's say you're processing your records and you have, let's say five batches. So you have batch one, batch two, batch three, and batch four and then you have batch five. So you have different set of records in each of these batches. And let's say one of the record failed in batch three. That's fine because these batches which were successful without any issue, they will not be rolled back. So you do not have to rerun the same thing again. All you have to do is whichever batch failed, you just have to rerun that one because others were successful. So these will not be rolled back because each of them have their own transaction. They're not running in single trans. They have each of them are running in their own transaction and each transaction has their own governor limits. So you're not hitting your governor limits. And if one of the batch failed, the rest of the batches are successful, will not be rolled back. So this is another advantage of using batch apex. Then the next interview question that we asked was, what are the different methods that are available in the batch apex? So if you want to write the batch apex class, means if you want to process your records in the batchable format, in the form of the batches, then you have to implement this interface called database.batchable interface. So this is the name of the interface that you have to implement. And once you implement this interface, you have three methods that you need to implement. First one is the start method. The second one is the execute method. And the third one we have is the finish method. So these are the three methods that you need to implement when you implement this batchable interface. So what is the start method for? The start method is going to collect the records which will be passed to this execute method. An execute method will be the method which will have all the logic. So if you are uh, updating those records, that logic will be here. If you are archiving those records, the logic of that would be in the execute method. So execute method is where the whole logic would be that you're going to perform for each batch. The start method will collect the records that we need to pass to this execute method. The start method will be called once at the beginning of the batch apex job and it will return you what? It will return you either a type of this query locator object or it will return you 
an iterable that contains the records or the object that you're going to pass to your execute method. So start method will collect the records that we need to process. Once the start method has, the start method will return you the records that needs to be processed, then those records will go through the execute method. And this execute method will be performed every time a batch runs. So let's say if you have 10 batches, this the execute method will be called 10 times for each of those batch. The default batch size is 200 records. So every batch will have up to 200 records. The default size is 200 records. So the execute method takes in two parameters. First one is of the type batchable context. And the second one is the records that are returned by the start method. And then the return type is void. So it does not return you anything. Then the third method that you need to implement is finish method. So let's say you wanted to send an email after all the ba batches are processed. Okay, so then let's say you want to send an email to the administrator saying that, hey, we have successfully completed all the batches and this is our status report. So that kind of content you're going to write in the finish method and this finish method will execute only once after all the batches have are successful. So that's when this finish method will be executed. So it will be executed post-processing operations once all the batches are processed. So it takes in one parameter of the type batchable context and it returns you a void. So if you want to send an email, if you wanted to create a report, etc., all that stuff you're going to specify inside of the finish method. So start method is going to collect the records, which will be passed to the execute method. Execute method will doing all the logic that you need to do for each of the batch it will run once. So for every batch, this execute method will run. And then after all the batches have successfully completed, then we have is the finish method that will get executed once the, all the batches are processed. So this is, these are the three methods that are available in the batch apex. So if somebody asks you that, hey, if you have, let's say, millions of records, how are you going to process those million records without hitting the governor limits? So the answer to that question is, hey, I'm going to use my batch apex. I'm going to divide those records in multiple batches and those batches will be in the governor limits. And if one of the batch fails, their other batches will not be rolled back. So I'm going to use batch apex. And in order to make the classes batch apex, I have to implement this interface called batchable. And once I implement this interface, I have these three methods that I want to implement. So this is how you're going to process large chunk of records. Now in the next tutorial, we are going to do an example in which we are going to implement this interface, we'll provide, we're going to use all these methods and we're going to process the records. We do not have that many records in our developer edition, but still you will get a little feel of what batch, how does this batch apex work?